So, what do you think about mechs? I love mechs, I think everyone loves mechs. They're arguably, simultaneously, the coolest and least practical concept of all time. Come on boys, mechs, what do we think? <laughs> There's a lot you could say about what mechs would be like in reality. Probably expensive, clumsy, they're basically a horrifying Russian industrial accident live leak video in vehicular form, but f*** that shit. We still want them. I think I speak for humanity on this one. Sometimes you want to save taxpayer money and spend it on responsible sh** like schools and healthcare, but sometimes you just want to look sick as f**k while shooting a gun the size of a school bus. Come on man, let's go. Let me repurpose a tank cannon as a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. Let me put Godzilla in a full Nelson. So I want to genuinely ask the question, the big question, truly one of the questions of all time. Could we make mechs? Would it work? Would it be practical? Is there any conceivable scenario where building one would be a smart move rather than a Brexit level completely predictable? catastrophe. First, let me define mech real quick. A mech is a robot, usually a giant one. It's also piloted, so transformers don't count. Mechs are basically like a tank or a fighter plane, but with a generally more humanoid design, so it could hypothetically punch a giant monster, or read a giant newspaper, or finger blast the Statue of Liberty. Of course, that still leaves lots of wiggle room for interpretation. Do basically human-sized exoskeleton stuff like Iron Man suits or the javelins from Anthem qualify? Should we talk about the industrial-style mechs from Aliens, Avatar, Red Faction? We might want to limit ourselves to the bigger, several-story tall combat machines. They're the ones that seem to appear in the most movies and shows and video games about mechs. Everything from Titans from Titanfall to the Armored Cores from Armored Core to the Heavy Gears from Heavy Gear. There's loads of examples around this general size bracket. There's the mecha from Robotech, Battletech, Mech Warrior, Tau Battle Suits from Warhammer 40k, arguably even two-legged walkers from Star Wars. There's the goddamn Pilaf machine from Dragon Ball for fuck's sake. Now mecha goes much bigger still. There's Gundam, there's Evangelion, there's Pacific Rim. Shit gets fucking massive in some of these. In Gurren Lagann they stop trying to be sensible and make a story about robots throwing galaxies at each other. Clearly some of these are more grounded than others, and while the exosuit style thing is the most grounded of all, I think, they aren't really mechs. It kind of becomes a different thing when you just wear a robot-like clothing. Not that exoskeleton suits aren't cool, it's just a part of me wants to say you shouldn't be able to slip into a mech like you're putting on a condom. I could talk about the small industrial ones too, but honestly the case for those is pretty easy, I think. Yeah, they would work. In an industrial setting? Yeah, totally. Everything from an exoskeleton to a 5 meter tall piece of heavy machinery? I don't think that's a giant stretch. You could definitely make one work in principle with enough research and development. We do already have robots and industrial machines and shit that work in real life. A real industrial mech is certainly achievable, in theory. Sure, a forklift is probably still a safer, more practical, massively cheaper option, and if you required a giant two-legged thing to do an industrial job for you, I kind of don't see why you'd need to have a guy sitting inside the vehicle. The added risk of a biped vehicle fucking up and eating shit into the floor means you'd probably remote control it, right? Or use AI and watch it try and figure out stairs without giving itself a metal prostate exam. But I'm sure there's an edge case where piloted industrial mechs make sense. A place where somehow remote controlling it wouldn't work and neither would having wheels. Maybe if you worked in a giant magnet factory in a war zone so everything's covered in shrapnel. Piloted industrial bipedal mech. Perfect solution. But that's easy so I'm taking the slightly more difficult route of arguing for something bigger and explicitly designed for murder. I want to make the case for something along the lines of a titan or an armoured core. Within reason this kind of stuff is theoretically possible. Physics doesn't immediately burst into laughter when you suggest making a big robot used in combat. So I want to find a reason we could actually make something like that workable. That said, I'm not even gonna try and argue in favour of some Pacific Rim shit where they're all 100 metres tall. You can squint at physics textbooks as hard as you want, at the end of the day, that ain't happening. I think the square cube law speaks for itself on this one. I could practically hear the Starship launch tower bursting all the blood vessels in its crotch trying to do a little snippety snippety thing. You think this f***ing thing's gonna walk around like a guy? Go for a five minute jog across the entire country? Hang around a volcano like an office water cooler? No, it's gonna take one step and fall apart like an orphan's self esteem on bring your loving family to work day. So I I don't know, like a five or so-ish metre tall mech designed for military purposes. I think that's maybe sensible, so could it work, in principle? First, let's address why we might even want mechs in the first place, because nobody watches Gundam and thinks, hmm, yes, this seems like an affordable military procurement plan. No, you're watching because big robots are cool as fuck. <laughs>
Here's the right way to think about this. In a military context, for something to be used, it needs to provide some strategic advantage over an adversary that some other solution wouldn't be able to provide as well. This means, at some point, some short back and sides five-star fleet admiral stick up his ass tall forgot how to smile ass looking motherfucker's gonna ask you to explain your reasoning. So you're telling me we should use giant robots? Yeah. Which require a huge number of non-interchangeable components? Yeah. And an insane number of moving parts and mechanical interactions? Mm-hmm. Almost none of which can afford to break as doing so would completely disable it? Yes. And which would therefore require continuous extensive maintenance to keep it running? Mm, yeah. All of which would make it vastly costlier, more expensive, and more fragile than a tank? Mm hmm And it would be a giant, incredibly obvious target on an open battlefield, and will therefore probably be shot at more than anything else? Kinda. And the resulting giant robot has the plus side of being able to move around on the battlefield much like a tank, shoot a weapon much like a tank, keep people safe inside of it much like a tank, and move over rough terrain much like a tank. Uh, yeah, when you say it like that. Unfortunately, it's actually quite difficult to come up with scenarios where mechs would work and tanks wouldn't. It really is just a tank with legs, if you think about it. And huge legs like these are going to be very fragile, especially by comparison, considering a tank is basically just an armoured rectangle with treads on it and a gun barrel sticking out. Tanks are as compact and omnidirectionally armoured as possible, as it probably should be. No one's asking, what if we made a tank that could go over on its ankle, can't wheel down a hillside and break both of its legs? There's also a weight problem. Guns, hydraulics, metal plating, mechanical parts, that it's heavy, man. Even a mech the size we're talking about. Earth's gravity alone is enough to destroy something like this just trying to walk around. So, what would be positive about a mech? Well, the question kind of comes down to what are legs better at than wheels or tracks? It's not resistance to weapons fire. A fucked up wheel can still haphazardly attempt to drag you forwards. A pair of blown off legs cannot. It's not mechanical simplicity or ease of maintenance. Military technology is very concerned about resilience. The last time you want a gun to jam or an engine to overheat is when a bunch of dudes are trying to murder the fuck out of you. And a fully functioning combat mech would be one of the most complicated machines created by man. It's not speed either, despite a bunch of mechs in fiction having thrusters and being able to fly around all over the place, if you tried that in reality the weight of the mech and the necessary size limitations on your fuel tanks would give you like 5 seconds of sluggish thrust, probably followed by the mech falling over and breaking into about 14,000 pieces. The one thing mechs have over tanks and other military vehicles would be manoeuvrability. Mechs can duck around corners, mechs can shimmy down narrow streets, mechs could even jump if you figured out the whole weight problem, and therein lies my solution to where mechs could end up showing up in reality. And not simply where, but when. If I had to guess the best case use scenario for mechs, it wouldn't be on Earth. It would be in close quarters urban combat situations of some kind or another on an off-world colony. How's that for a solution to the weight problem? Don't make the mech lighter, just locate the mech somewhere where it weighs less. I'm playing 4D chess here, my goals are beyond your understanding. So I'm picturing something like this. It's a few hundred years in the future. We've got colonies on the Moon, Mars, Titan, and crucially, a bunch of deep space habitats throughout the solar system. The Space habitats are mostly rotational cylinder and torus type habitats filled with high density urban environments. If I had to guess what the future will look like, it's probably kind of something like that. The urban environments are complex and interconnected across a lot of different levels, and while the habitats simulate gravity through rotation so you can walk around, they only do it to like 0.2 g's because that means it's easier to move around. Like a relatively athletic person can practically scale the side of a building with a few handholds and a bit of effort, and the muscle degradation problem has been solved already via some mixture of genetic engineering and cybernetics. Now let's say you're in charge of one of these habitats and it's being invaded by hostile forces. Your external defences have already failed, the invaders have breached the habitat and they now occupy a decent portion of the urban environment within it. You need to take back the city, ideally without completely levelling half of the city. You are the government, it was your job to prepare defensive measures in advance of this. This is one of the things you prepared for, so what did you stock up on? What did you buy? What did you plan to do in this situation? I think there's a non-zero chance of using mechs, baby! Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! I mean, this still doesn't answer why you'd cram a pilot up in this bitch. I think it'd be a remotely operated or AI controlled thing, so to be honest, it's more like a giant robot than a mech. This is also not necessarily the only option. There's all kinds of other shit you could do if you already have this kind of technology, but do you hear me? There's a chance, I'm telling you, there's a fucking chance. Giant robot mechs! One day, long after we're all dead as fuck, which kind of puts a damper on the whole situation, actually. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want, and I'll catch you next time. Over and out.